Hola amigos, hola amigas, welcome, bienvenido, croissant, salam, chest, nyak, shimash, welcome back to the channel. It's 2022 and it's time for the tech and gadget segment that I have for you guys on a weekly basis. So, these two items that you have here in front of me were given to me by a subscriber, Dave. Hello Dave. Um, last year he got them on eBay and had them sent to me directly. And so I thought, wait, these are the first two items that I'm going to bring to you guys. I've taken them out of the box, but that is about as far as I've gotten. So let me bring you down a little bit closer. Um, I do know for a fact that this is a cassette player and this is a CD player. And I also know that they are Alba. Now, as you guys know, back in the day, Alba was the budget brand of machines and gadgets although i did find that their hi-fis um the, uh, were, were pretty good to be honest the sound on them was pretty good i just wasn't wrapped on the um on the construction of them and the materials but then again sony were really really good in their construction of materials but then i didn't find their sound as good there we go so what do we have here we've got this is the Alba CPC 500 personal stereo cassette player. Uh, DC 3 volts uh, or 2 equivalent or DC 3 volts with a AC adapter. There we have the, um, it must be the serial number on it, I think. Two AA batteries. Uh, there we have the power for the 3 volts, DC 3 volts, volume control uh, headphones. We have a belt clip lift to release that's nice and easy uh, let's take a look inside the compartment the battery compartment that looks pretty fine no problem at all in there uh, three controls so we have play fast forward and stop that's it and lift up oh my gosh there's a cassette inside oh my gosh the bridges of madison county Jeepers creepers, if there was ever anything that would put me to sleep, it would be The Bridges of Madison County on a cassette. Read by the author with Ben Kingsley. Well, at least it's Ben. <gasps> oh, Hereford and Worcester County Libraries. Whoopsie, they forgot to give it back. 1994. Um, yeah, I'm not um, fencing here. Uh, stolen goods. So I will... I don't know what I'll do, actually. Shall I send it back? I don't know. You let me know in the comments what I should do. But I ain't going to be reading it. So, there we go. Um, on the top of it, we have Super Bass on or off. And then we have the battery indicator. So, let me get two lovely Duracell batteries. Uh, that does look like... If I... Oh, light's flickering. Yeah, the light's flickering. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hold your horses. Okay, Dee calm yourself down. Uh, it does look like there might have been a slight bit of leakage inside there. I don't know if you can see. There's a bit of a stain on there. Not too bad. doesn't look like anything's rusted, thankfully. Right, let's let's get two batteries and test this. Okay, so I go in that way. Okay, let's open it up. Okay, well, it's working. Let's pop in the cassette. 
and I can't see in. So we've got the battery light that's come on. Okay, yeah, I can see it moving around on the inside. Let me get my little torch. Okay, if I get it at just the right angle, you can see that it is moving around. There we go, inside there. So it's working. Um, let's have a listen to the sound quality. This friend would say you're trying to destroy their livelihood. That sounds like Isabella Rossellini. Uh, It'll be fun figuring it out. Ooh, it's a bit... Uh, let's try the other side. He imposed his words. Like... Yeah, there's definitely some wow and flutter on that. Let me try a decentish cassette. I'll probably have to mute the sound for this one. Yep. <laughs> Right, let me try it. It sounds okay. There's just a heck of a lot of wow and flutter. Let me try it on my um, headphones. Right, okay. This definitely needs some TLC before we carry on testing it. It's going to need a new belt and it's also going to need a good clean out as well. So, in that case, we are going to take it apart. This looks like it could be a more simple one. Because it seems there's four screws there. Let's remove the belt hook. Four screws. And then maybe it just pops open. So let me get my bits for it. Now, I don't know if you remember, if you watched the last series, I was doing a Sony belt and I was desperately looking for this belt that I knew I'd bought ages ago, but could not find it anywhere at all. I found them in the end. They had fallen down on the floor and they were down wedged underneath a vacuum down there. So these were the um, set of four belts. I used one for the Sony WMEX, WMGX, WMRX, WMFX, WM model. So I found them, so yay. Right, I've got my belt and I got my screwdrivers. And also as well, I had a comment from a subscriber. Well, I don't know if he subscribes, but. So I have bought a proper plastic spudger I've already used it, that ends knackered. And I've also bought this as well, a little pack of um, kind of like metal spudgers as well to go into the toolbox. So we can take them out of there. And there we go. A few more tools for the little tech box. But I got the plastic one, which was like uh, someone had said, only use that. Okay, let's find... A screwdriver. Yeah, I'm still going to open. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so that side. The back of it comes completely off. Oh yeah, look at that. You can see that belt is... Um... That's definitely going to be causing wow and flutter. Look at it, no wonder it was. Quite a simple looking belt as well. Um, so I'm positive that I will find one in here. Let me take the belt off. That's too big. Let's try this one. Oh, 
That seems okay. Yep, that sounds, or seems okay. Um, let me put a cassette in. And batteries would help. Yeah, that sounds okay. Let's try. A YouTube song. No. Oh. Batteries do. Batteries. Batteries do help. Put in a battery. So the thing is, that is not a very good cassette anyway, because it's one that I've recorded. Uh, let me try another cassette. You probably won't be able to hear this one. Do you know what? That actually doesn't sound half bad. Let me try my headphones. Now the funny thing is the um, bass when you switch the bass bit on really quite muffles the sound. It makes it more muffled than it makes it a bit more bassy, but it sounds really muffled. There is wow one fluffer fluff 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 flutter on it but it's definitely not as bad as it was and i think that's pretty much what it would have been like when it came out to the shop now what i'm going to do is give it a clean up um i'm going to put some isopropyl alcohol on this and just give a little wipe over with a cotton bud and uh, you know my general just kind of like clean and i'm going to clean the head and the pinch roller on it and um give it a bit of a spruce up and i've got some lovely wax so i'm going to spray some thingy majig on it and um so i'm going to put some isopropyl alcohol on here because actually when i'm looking at it i don't know if you can see there is a teeny weeny little bit of old corrosion on there so i'm going to give this a clean as well so i'll do this in fast forward for you guys
Okay, we have cleaned it up and uh, inside and out and it looks so much nicer. And the sound, now I cleaned the heads and the pinch roller. So I have pretty much given up trying. There's still a little bit of hiss, but the sound quality is really, really not that bad at all. Um, let's put in a different cassette. Again, you won't be able to listen to this. That is so much nicer. Now let me try this YouTube cassette that I have made. The wow and flutter on it has really, really dropped and it doesn't sound half bad now that they're the head's been cleaned so it's been kept in really good condition there's hardly any scratches or marks on it um he says um but it is in really good condition um what was i going to say yeah that's Not the fastest of rewinders, I will give it that. Oh, was that the end of the... Oh, I know what I've done. Dorian, you donkey, you played the wrong side. Yeah, that's really the recording, but um, it does sound a heck of a lot better. Um, when I use nicer cassettes on it, I'm going to have to try. And when you wobble it around, you do get the wow, wow and flutter, but not too much. But if you've got it resting down, that's not too bad at all. Excellent. I think that is a win. New belt, clean up, and that doesn't sound half bad. Right. Okay. So that is the cassette part. And I'm going to remove the batteries. I also put some of the, um, some of these, people have asked me about this in the past. It's um, Aerospace Protectant Ultimate UV Protection 303. Um, it, you have to apply it all the time if it's going to be something that's out in the sun or whatever. But um, I stick it on as well just to help protect it. And it gives it a nice, nice feel into it as well. So that's nice in the hand. Um, it reminds me a little bit of the one I had, the Ferguson one, my one that I've got. Uh, check back on videos on that right okay next let's take a look at the cd player now cd players are either they work or they don't work that's basically it there's no in between on them uh two batteries on this well hang on let's have a look class one laser product alba pcd 268 personal cd player three volts dc 4.5 Caution, serial number, and another number down there. It's got a little rubber stopper there and there. But not on there. I guess it doesn't matter. It's got rubber stoppers there, so meh. Two batteries. Battery compartment looks nice and clean. Okay, so we got a little window there uh, for it. It says Alba Super Base Boost System BBS, or th yeah, BBS, programmable memory, portable compact disc player. There we have the uh, DC 4.5 volts. That's to open and close the lid. Here we have the headphone, DBS on or off, volume control. Make sure that's on low. Then on the front, we have a little display. We have program, skip, search, play, pause, stop, or mode. So if we open it up, oh, there's no CD in there. Oh. Oh. What's occurred in?
okay it looks it feels like there's supposed to be like a little spring in this and it's not working see so i have to push that back Oh, that's a shame. There we go. It does stay in certain times. Mm. Doesn't matter. Let's get a CD and let's check if it works. First of all, if I press play, will anything come up on the front? No, so nothing's coming up. Maybe you have to have a disc inside it. Let me get a disc. Okay, I've got a CD here. Don't judge me. Travis. Right, let's put this in. Let's move you over. Okay, so the disc is in. Let's press play. Nothing. Nothing at all. Let's just check the batteries. You know, sometimes you have to fanny around with batteries. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oops. Okay. And tracks, one track. That's pause, so it's flashing. I don't know if you can see. There we go. So it's flashing there, so that's pause. That appears to be playing. Fast forward. Sounds okay. It sounds like it's looking through the tracks. It's spinning around. All right, let me go back to track number one. Nine, eight, oh, I went to ten. Mm -hmm. Okay, go to track one. Let me put in headphone jack. And I've turned the volume down low, so let me turn up the volume. When you switch in before DBS on and off, it goes off, the sound goes off for a second and then goes back on, so. Starts playing. Mm. Off, on, off, on. Right, okay, so it appears to be working fine, apart from that clasp. It's a bit temperamental. But as soon as that, it does, even though it's a bit temperamental and dodgy, it does recognize it, but not much um, G, G thing on it. Right, okay. So we know that it works. Let's see, because that other CD that I took out was a... I have no idea what's on this. Let me give it a, a wipe over. Okay, I know what this is. This is the um, disc of our wedding in 2007. And there's, the, there's three songs on there. One for going in, one for waiting, and then one for when we come out. This is from 2007 and has ended up in the Travis um, case. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark that and put it somewhere safe. Now, I don't know if you can see on this, but there we have on the display on the front... So we press pro. Mm. Doesn't seem to like being stopped. Hang on, let's press pause. Um, and then we have program. So you can one, all. 
intros, shuffle, or back on. Uh, this one for program. I don't really know how to work that. Hmm. Anyway, it's got the program thing on it. I'll have to download the instructions if you really, really, really wanted to. But that doesn't sound too bad at all. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have much uh, G protection on it. It's not really one that you could go... Uh, it's not really one that you could go jog into. But it doesn't sound bad at all. It's a shame about that little clasp. Right. What I'm going to do... Is I want to see... It goes back here. By itself. checks and then it says error no CD I'm gonna have a look and see if I can um, see if there's like a little spring or something that might might have popped off it so let me remove the batteries and let me take off the screws. I can see the screws around it. So let's take off the screws. We'll go back around. Must remember that that switch there must go back in before I spudge it back together. Okay. the wires there for the power going in a bit dusty let me see if I put some of this on it will it give it spring back That's actually better. Okay, so, I now I have to put this carefully back together and I hope Things broken, it just kind of like sits into the plastic case. There we go.
Right, so I put it all back together and I was like, why is it not working? And that's because two of these had broken off from here on the board going to the battery. So I'm going to have to put some fresh wire on it and solder them on. Pain, but unfortunately there's not much I can do. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. Right, so it's fixed, but it's it's not fixed, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so you put the CD in, that's fine. Close it, battery powered, comes on. Um, tells you how many's on there, and then it starts playing the first track. And you can skip... And you can fast forward within the track and press stop. But it does not like to be moved around much at all. But to be honest, that's the way that it was before anyway. So now we don't have the issue with it staying open. Um, the issue is now getting it, um, sorry, to keep it closed. The issue now is to get it open. So you have to slide that across and then just use your finger a little bit and then it it comes out fine so at least now if you are using it it's and you're moving it around it's not going to pop open if you accidentally um, knock it so it's kind of bodged but it works if you know what i mean anyway so we put new batteries in it we've tested it it sounds really good i am really happy with it the soldering these two wires i seriously need to do a soldering course because that was really bloody hard and i don't understand why so let's just get the case okay let's get the cd out put it back in its case and the other one so i know what it is Right, I think I'm going to give this just a little bit of a wee clean up. Okay, so now we have got them together and cleaned. Let me clean up all of this and come back to you. So there we go, my friends. These are the two fixes for today. I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of a bodge, but they do actually work. The cassette one was really nice to work with because it was easier to open up. It was easier just to change the belt. The CD player, on the other hand, was a little bit of a biatch, but I did enjoy working on it. Need to improve my uh, soldering skills on it. I don't know what happened, but... But they're fixed, they're clean, and they work, and I can use them. So that's always a bonus. So I hope you've enjoyed the first kind of like gadgety video of 2022, guys. And I will see you in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching. Bye.